Ooh, what is up, you guys? And of course, welcome to the UBL Week 5 versus Vipsis and his Helsinki High Dragons. Now, before going in, I do kind of want to cover um, there is a bit of a rivalry to us, and while it is a very friendly one at that, it's still great to face him off. Um, he beat me rather effortlessly in the UBL D League, and we faced each other after that 12 weeks later in the finals where he should have beaten me effortlessly, uh, choked for one play, and Hex intervened, and I pretty much stole that title for him. While I'm happy I won, I also do absolutely, no matter what, um, see the Hex as a way of uh, not necessarily getting to know how that game could have turned about. There are a few iffy situations that should have been up to odds, if anything, that I never needed to take stand for. Uh, so with that in mind, I do want to enforce that aspect, that that's something um, that I... It's bothering me, and I'm really glad I got to face him again. And probably the team that I um, think would more be in depth with his playstyle, as I decided to go for a more bulky offensive team this time around, mainly to kind of try to not check him, that would be the right, wrong word, but not have as fast-paced game as uh, we had before. And also because he plays the longer game and I clearly can't beat him uh, with straight-off offense, so with that in mind, this was a route I decided to take. Now, the team he has is on course just below me, right there, and it is Glesko, Sisor, Celebi, uh, Greninja, which unfortunately is out of frame, so is Moltres, so, uh, yay me, um, <laughs> Alola Muck, Alomomola, Dragaldi, Dainji, Pilswine, and Glade, the mega form, which I've been forced to fend before, and um, it didn't go too well. Uh, <laughs> this time, though, I'm much more ready. Uh, I had two perks versus this team. First and foremost, I have Sarah Aura, which covers a lot of the issues that this team could be forcing me to do, and the other one being actually Barbarical, which is a Pokemon that in theory actually can sweep this team, the only Pokemon standing between it and uh, um, sweeping is would be potentially Alomomola, so that's a Pokemon I'm fearing because it pretty much denies my Shell Smash. So with that said, we're going to cover, of course, first Pokemon, Sarah Aura, we now have a speed investment, enough to outspeed Greninja. We are, um, Modest variant with expert belt it was decided, but do not want a sugar berry and whatnot, uh, or even ex a life orb to an extent. But I think this makes the most sense. Stat distribution, as stated, just to creep um, Greninja and then fully offensive. Some nice splits here, uh, really just they're basically like that. You just oh, little Eevee's there, little Eevee's there, and voila. We have a functional set. Um, attacks, however, Thunderbolt, Hidden Power Ice, Close Combat, and Volt Switch. Um, close Combat is kind of an iffy decision. I decided to have it just for Pills one, actually. It was Wither Dad or Grass Knot. But Close Combat do ensure some high damage output. And Hidden Power Ice here is a core for Glisco, which checks this set to an extent. And also, if I'm forced to, uh, to sack this Pokemon versus Dragology, of course, that's going to be an aspect. Um, Volt Switch is only there for pivoting. He only has one potential, um, I was gonna, or two, I should say, Pokemon that can deny me Volt Switch and Eglisco and Pillswine. Though I don't think they're like coming in versus this set too often, depending on if they get to scout. Uh, special set is absolutely a set I think is more devastating versus this. Um, I was considering a physical set with Fire Punch and Knockoff, but it just. It just stumbles versus Gliscor, which is such a good Pokemon towards me. So we decided, or I decided, to uh, avoid that. Next Pokemon is Cure and Black. There's really nothing to this set. I've decided to go over the Brave Nature because I really don't need to outspeed anything. And the things that outspeed is outspeeds naturally. So yeah, like when I look all over this team, um, I still outspeed even if I'm Brave. I outspeed Muck. I outspeed Sisor. I outspeed Ayanshi. Um, stuff like that, which is a clear hint, uh, and I don't want to creep neither Moltres nor Glisco. Uh, I, in theory, don't need to, which is good. So that's why, since I have a mixed set, that this was probably the easiest way to go. So yeah, this is nothing to it. I had twelve. Oh yeah, I had twelve only if um, Alola Mola was getting fishy and got four EVs on its speed because I basically cre uh, creeped that. If anything. But besides that, it's fairly bulky, some special attack, and a lot of HP. 
Uh, I was considering risk roofs, but I'm saltless after all. I needed all these for a tax to function properly. So if you don't gonna go for roofs, you go for a salt vest, basically. Um ice beam, hidden power fire, and you got a fusion bolt and nerve power. Simple set. Um should be able to do well versus his Greninja, which I believe is a Pokemon that come in and out a lot versus me. And the other ones are just this Pokemon can stay in against a lot of matchups naturally. So I'm not too worried. Um, the only thing that holds me back is Stealth Rocks, and, but that's an aspect we're going to cover also because I have three Pokemon for this matchup that are weak to Rocks. I'm not a big fan of this team. I would never draft a team like this with these issues. I kind of just want to cover that. I hate being Stealth Rock weak. It's so weird to build around that, even more so when you don't have a Rapid Spinner. Um, Jaros, Adamant, Wakamberry, able to fish for any Hidden Power Electrics, uh, Thunderbolts, and even more so, Thunder Punch from Muck, which I believe is going to be an aspect. Um, it's pretty darn simple. This Pokemon can set up against a lot of things. The only issue is, as stated before, Aloha Mola do shake Barbarical. It also kind of shakes this Pokemon. Um, and, and that's just how things are going to be. Uh, my setup opportunity is against Pillow Swine, it is against Aloha Mola to an extent, against Muck, uh, Celebi, depending on the set, Gliscor, and Scizor. Uh, we do where I stand, I, I don't know why, I, I, it's a royal we. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going for basically that what I needed to make this set work was having Intimidate over Moxie for one reason, and that was to make sure I can switch into things that can hit me offensively anyway. Uh, we look like a Scizor. Alola Mako has mentioned before, but also Gliscor, those are setup up opportunities that can screw me over by some weird sets. So with that in mind, yeah, that's why we decided to go with that. Um, besides that, it's a simple set. We do basically creep Greninja uh, at plus one as adamant. I didn't need to creep anything else because as said before, the things that outspeed me will outspeed me anyway. Um, and the things that I need to creep are only the things that are an issue at plus one. Um, I should go for plus two in this battle if I'm able to, uh, mainly because of you know potential scoffers and whatnot. Uh, I would not be surprised if uh, if you use a Gliscor with a scarf just to kind of ruin me. Um, but besides that, um, Greninja has been a scarfer before, could very well be a scarfer here again versus me, and uh, it could absolutely just been speed enough to creep a plus one Jardos, which is annoying for him. Um, besides that, Bounce Waterfall Earthquake covers everything I need. Um, Bounce is basically only for Celebi because it do... it do screw me over if I don't carry that. Um, then we have Mega Scissor. This time we're using a semi-offensive one. We're adamant, um, but we have a lot of defense investment into us. And the speed is only there for Loa Mola to be able to U-turn on it if it goes fully offensive or defensive. But yeah, nothing to it. Can stand against any matchup defensively and roost off. And the reason I use it is for only one reason, and that is the defog. Like bullet punch, U-turn aren't good measurements here. Maltras will wall this set, and there is nothing I can do about it. Um, and that's going to be annoying. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> but that's basically it. Uh, next one is Barbarical. Um, I was considering having Barbarical with Rindleberry in Stealth Rocks, uh, mainly because I knew um, that um, no matter how I twist and turn things, Stealth Rocks is going to be important for um, Moltres, which is a very good Pokemon versus me. But Barbarical also had the measurement to actually just pop it and kill it directly because of its tough claw. Um, so we have Figure Berry. This is only in case we're able to set up versus something that isn't defensively or offensively that, or how do you say it? Um, if I get a free Shell Smash, I shouldn't worry about Choice Band and Bullet Punch from Scissor. So you should be able to take it and recover. Um, basically has two priority users and one is worse than the other. The other one being, of course, Greninja, which I don't necessarily fear. Um, once I set up, of course. Um, stat revision right, is quite simple. Uh, this speed investment here is only actually to outspeed uh, uh, Aloha Mola and stuff like that. I don't creep anything else. I, I, cre I creep, oh, I guess, a defensive scissor. But that's really it. Like That's the only thing I needed to creep it for. If in case I don't go for a setup, I can't pull that off. 
combination here is liquidation exists a return and shell smash return is there for Aloha Mola and Aloha Mola alone um, we'll see how that works like I the damage output was the best with return in mind but it's also I, I was considering giga impact basically liquidation combination with giga impact do KO it but I also sack my mom when I do that so I felt it was kind of risky I rather risk the liquidation skull combination pop the figure berry and try to take it out at least a plus two, I do around 40% with return. So it's it's not a natural switch in. And if it decides to do some shenanigans with Wish, I could very well go for another Shell Smash. And I, I'll go to length to destroy a little bit, which I feel is so annoying. While I deal with it with some of my mods, it's still one of those mods that just naturally shake things. And the last Pokemon is one of the really, really, really niche set. I'm, I said it before, I'm not a big fan of Chandelot whatsoever. I think it's... Um, it has its merits, but it's very hard to use. And this is a matchup where it actually made sense. Now, I will pre-record -reco this after Wipe Bell, and I do realize one thing that was a flaw here, and that is that I was Flame Body. I should have been Flash Fire. The idea here was to check uh, Moltres. Uh, basically, Moltres do not appreciate the fully boosted merits of uh, Fire Blast. So we're a modern set, very naturally bulky, high HP to an extent. Some speed investment. This is the speed investment here was only the creep. Um, so I remember it correctly. So I say the right things here. I for the life of me can't remember. Um, I think it was a speedy scissor, but yeah, nothing to it. I wouldn't worry about it. Um, and then we have Fire Blast, Energy Ball, Will O Wisp, Pain Split. Cold Barret in combination with Will O Wisp uh, should be able to destroy Muck or Mega Glade uh, naturally, even scissor. And then from there, be able to pain split back when they try to be defensively bulky towards me. Um, the thing is here, my damage output is going to be higher than them. And I could very well, they, they can't stall me out. Um, but besides that, it's just a weird set. Uh, energy Ball here, there's a pop potential switching with from Greninja. Fire Blast is to be used as well as possible versus anything that could come in versus it. Motors takes around 40% once Flash Fire kicks in. So that's why we just kept Fire Blast. I was considering Flamethrower, but I don't need to. Like, I just need the damage. And if it tries to root stall against me, I won't use Pain Split. That's how it works. Um, but it is a niche set, but it's a set I firmly believe gonna work versus me or him. Uh, but yeah, that's the whole team. Like, going into this game, I am. I was a bit worried. Uh, there were matchups I didn't like, and. Um, we had a rather late game, which is why this game is, um, uh, or late on a week, we usually have the, the games the week before, but due to him having work and whatnot, we just couldn't find a time to make this work. Even more so, it didn't help that I am on vacation, and we do something every day, so I am not necessarily that available as I want to be. That said, though, um, I was really happy to battle him, and uh, I'm going to post narrate the battle just to cover the things that happened, and yeah, we'll take it from there. So with that said... Transition. This does fall naturally to me at all. Huh. So yeah, looking at this matchup, I was to understand right. I failed to reconcile a few things, and I didn't say it in the video, but I was feeling like I said, Gliscor, Alo Mola made a lot of sense. Didn't necessarily expect Scissor, uh, but that's the only thing I really feel. Uh, and of course, as always, before going in, check out Vepsi's site. He has this battle also uploaded today. Uh, it's gonna be linked out, of course. Uh, besides that, um, we did force ourselves to restart this game two times because I got a first turn freeze versus Vipsis and yeah, I don't want that. I want this game to be as clean as possible and really more so versus Vipsis. I feel I already have that UBL final behind me where it just is a disgusting win for all the wrong reasons. So I really, really wanted at least first turn to be somewhat right, and I think we got that. Uh, my initial thought here is that Kieran Black is going to be the lead. It makes a lot of sense versus this, since his Stealth Rocker is Celebi, his potential Spiker is Greninja. So, um, yeah, it just, it's a very, very natural switch in. Um, so, besides that, we'll take it from there. So, with that said, enjoy. So, from the get-go here, like I said, I lead up with Kieran Black, and it was really for only one reason, and that was, I'm very Stealth Rock weak, Celebi seemed to be the best lead to get after Stealth Rocks, or potentially Greninja for Spikes. Uh, so, I do get a massive momentum here as I go for free Ice Beam, and this time I won't freeze Bob, <laughs> however, I will get it frozen. 
Um, so with that said, I actually told my opponent here we could start over, but he didn't want to. So I decided, let, let's switch out, let's get him some momentum and, you know, kind of breathing room. As he switched into his Molemort. And this was cool, as I really didn't know what to do. I actually decided to switch out, or I didn't want to stay in for a potential Fire Blast. As uh, I don't get the ideal switch in here. Got in Channel O, uh, baiting for as Flash Fire that I didn't have. As I'm forced to switch out, Greninja is gonna go for that very, 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 very easy Dark Pulse, I thought, but no, he goes for Surf. And we're gonna eat this up very well. Now, I decided to go for an Earth Power, predicting the muck to come in. And I was really, 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 really hoping I was gonna take it out, but I am not. I regret so much not being an expert belt. This was absolutely the difference between getting that Pokemon out of the way and not <laughs> being able to take it out. As all I really can do here is keep going for Earth Power and get the special defense drop. But I was somewhere down the line there thinking, you know, I can spam this and eventually it's gonna go to Moltres. So it might actually be better off for me to just kind of get the Fusion Bolt going. Um, revealing that I'm clearly not Scarfed. And Fusion Bolt does roughly the same amount of damage as Earth Power. But yeah, now of course showcase that we're not Scarfed. So he knows now how he has a few Pokemon that switch into his Pokemon naturally and can abuse that. So I switch out as he keeps going for uh, the recycles. I thought, let's bring Scissor, try to bait him to see if he has Fire Punch or not. Uh, but he's not going to do that. He'll go directly for Moltres. And that's the right play, right? As the only thing I was going to do, no, no, don't let the Flame Body kicks in here. Don't, we haven't seen pressure. He is, of course, Flame Body. As, it's a mistake over a U turn. As luckily for us, it doesn't kick in. Uh, so I go to Sarah Aura or Aradius. And. Yeah, I go for Volt Switcher, predicting him to switch out. He has to walk on Barry, however, so he felt extremely comfortable staying in here, um, which I get. But uh, yeah, I go to Miraval uh, just to bait yet again for um, the Flash Fire. As you guys see, he doesn't affect me, so I was like, oh no, I have the wrong, I have the wrong man. Uh, I actually force switch back into Oriotos here, thinking that um, I should. I don't know why I did that. I should just come from Willowisp. It made sense. Uh, so I go for Volt Switch again, I go to Volt Heart, it's going to take my opportunity here to actually set up, uh, at least for one, as we see Fire Punch, he predicted into Scissor, nicely done, as uh, so now we go for Dragon Dance, and uh, he's staying in, so absolute feeling, alright, he has Thunder Punch, but we, at least we kind of pop the berry, um, unfortunately for me, uh, we get a UBL final situation here, where I get paralyzed, and it's actually kind of bad, uh, because it means that Yardos is, all intents and purposes, kind of useless right now. And for, versus Celebi, he gets his self rocks for free, and I go for a bounce. Um, basically, I just want so much damage as possible versus this, if anything. Uh, as it recovers, and he should be able to take this that hit naturally, but we get full paralyzed, so mm, don't necessarily get to find out how much that damage will do. And then he cover that up with Sun Headbutt, I'll get flinched, and then my Yardos is out of commission. So, yeah! Series of useless turns there, but that's the game we play sometimes. I'm I wasn't mad like the paralyzation kicked in and I was like, alright, no, it is where it is. I shouldn't get too ballsy about beside that. Uh, so I switched in my sister. Basically I was since this was bulky, I was gonna be able to take a hit on power fire anyway. So I'm gonna go for a defog. Um as he goes for U turns. Right now I pretty much know his complete set, and Barbarical should easily be able to set up versus this. So with that said, I'm gonna bring Ariados um and we see hidden power. Electric. So, yeah, now we're pretty much sure which set this is, and this should do well for us as I just switch in Starlog as an expecting Celebi to come in. Uh, I should potentially go for a Volt Switch anyway, since it doesn't have any switches for that. I guess it's kind of a weird play thinking about it. But I go for my really, 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 really free Shell Smash as he goes for U turn. It is a fair chunk. I'm still in range where I should survive a Bullet Punch from uh, um, the Scissor, but he is. Timid Scarf with Grass Knot, and I absolutely should have seen that one coming. Uh, I wasn't fully speed invested, and that's on me. As, of course, now things are looking tougher than ever. I can at least here go for a very, very easy Volt Switch, but I decided to go for Hidden Power 5. I, since he decided to go with that before, so I was thinking, I'll bring it down, and then he's probably gonna go for Stealth Rocks anyway, and if he do, then he loses the Celebi, but it actually goes for a U turn, thinking I would switch out most likely. Uh, so you go to Matthews, which is the Mega Glade, and this time, 
I don't have the means to deal with this Pokemon yet again, but it's worse this time around, or at least so I thought. As I go for a Volt Switch, um, my only potential switching is Scissor, just to kind of scout his... Uh, because it goes for close combat here, at least I can get something out of it. But it goes for Drain Punch and it shows me that that is an offensive Glade, they should always be offensive after all. And I'm not gonna stay in versus that. Uh, so I gonna go to my Miraval, uh, my Chandelo, and uh, looking back at this game, I should have gone for an energy ball here. Because that would have popped the Greninja. Um, he switches that in, and um, I don't know. This Fire Blast does so much damage that I felt had it been an energy ball that could very well have killed it. But yeah, I need to switch out. Going into Galvatron, very easy to switch in. As he goes with Dark Pulse, which we takes very well. Um, but we're starting to get in an area here where Chandelure might be the only response I have left for um, what do you call it? Um, for the Bob, the, the little Mox, so it's starting to look kind of grim. As uh, I go, I don't know why I went for Fusion Bolt to be honest. He was of course switching out since it was locked into that. But yeah, he goes for Stealth Rocks. I go for Defog here. Um, was feeling that I'm not gonna allow him to sack play this Pokemon. Uh, I'm very happy he decided to go for U turn. He could have just kept going for rocks to make them stay on the field. Um, I do have more Defox and he has Stealth Rocks, I hope, but I don't know. It's actually the other way around, so I would be forced to keep the rocks. Now, here's where I actually decided to sack off my um, Scissor. I thought the best play here in mind was actually to just get it down to range where Sarah Aura can kill this with a Thunderbolt. And uh, yeah, debatably, I would say it's kind of kind of shaky whether or not that was the right play. Uh, Thunderbolt here does a very good chunk of damage versus Bob, but yeah, I, this Pokemon can't win versus it. Uh, it simply cannot. I need to get Sean Lore in here uh, or cure him, or for that matter, just anything that works. As he keeps going for his cycles, I'm. I was kind of scouting whether or not uh, Close Combat did more than Thunderbolt, but it looks like Thunderbolt is a stronger move between the two, but I can't win uh, this matchup at all. I will lose eventually. So I decided to switch out. I'm gonna go to Galvatron to cure him lag. As um, I'll be honest, at this point, I kind of just wanted my opponent to wrap up the game, get the right matchup, and do the right things. Uh, as he goes to Blade the Scissor, which is a choice, Banded Scissor, I find out later. Um, I actually for a few seconds forgot that I wasn't Barberry Berry uh, for some reason because my first build I made was Barberry Berry I stayed in thinking I could take this hit and uh, yeah now it's just not looking good at all uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I go for a Willow Whisper um, and yeah I missed that and it is what it is and then I decided to keep going for it as Greninja comes in for free uh, I was debating go for Energy Ball but at this point I just I just didn't want to kind of screw up anything like I have had no means I left in me to actually just win the game so I might as well just make my opponent wrap up the game for me instead uh, it turned out to got rather lengthy anyway versus Sarah Aura and uh, Mux so I decided to cut the game here and just showcase that Vips is here to win the game 6-0 it is a really close 6-0 it, it absolutely so I do want to leave the game with a few, I guess, just afterthoughts. But quite frankly, I just want to just talk how I felt about the game. Even though it is a 6-0, I feel, like I said there, that it is a close 6-0. And I think I provide a really good game versus Vepsis. Vepsis has beaten me, like, easily before. And uh, the game before that was looking to be an easy sweep for him versus me again. And I think I got, this time, it actually wasn't that simple. They had a hard time breaking through. Uh, that was on me on two, of course, as I didn't necessarily break through his team the way I wanted to. But uh, yeah, I think even on six zero, it actually was a. This is the closest game we ever had, <laughs> and that sounds weird. But quite frankly, like all things considered, I really enjoyed how Vestas played this game. I think it was really, really well played, and uh, I was impressed. Um, I never gone to links versus him, and being that he was still. Persisting and defensively really, really well active was impressive and to see if anything. So GG if anything. Uh, absolutely major respect to Epsis. Um, the other thing I'm just going to talk about are the hacks in mind. Um, the Thunder Punch Paralyzation, while it isn't decisive for the game because the two Thunder Greninja is scarfed, just knowing that he was forced to sack play something to get Greninja in for free is something that I believe is annoying for me to know. Um, mainly because it also meant that well, 
Um, I didn't get to find that out. Uh, it could have been the very, very reason for me not to be shell smashing with, for example, Barbarical, knowing that information. And I really just want to force that. While this, like I said, unfortunate that uh, I got paralyzation, it, it isn't decisive. It just would have, it would have changed my game plan for sure. But that's really about it. The other thing, like I said, Barbarical shell smashing should have been jolly. Yes, <laughs> I should have been. Uh, little did I know, had I been jolly, I actually would have swept that team from there um, because, like I said, I do take a, a banded uh, bullet punch from Scissor, which was banded. Figure Berry kicks in, I will be able to take another one and kill the Scissor because that was the only Pokemon that was healthy enough to withstand the power of it. And uh, yeah, it was tough. It was tough knowing that, but it came afterwards. So, for what it's worth, it is a mis um, misbuilt on my side, and I should definitely considered Greninja being scarfed so it's it's a mistake on my side if anything uh, <laughs> other than that I think it went through quite well I should maybe with my four remaining Pokemon not sack Scissor uh, since he was I was no he had fire punch I was just not thinking he would gone for it um, because little did I know Chandelure was checking that Pokemon really well Mega Lake couldn't do anything versus me uh, since it was a risk of getting you know, Will Wisp and Pain Splitted, uh, Muck couldn't necessarily do anything unless it popped my Colberberry in Nexus getting burned, which I, of course, missed. Um, his sister couldn't do anything, Moltres couldn't do anything, Celebi couldn't do anything. It actually was only Greninja that could win versus my Chandelure, but I failed to realize that. And even at that, let's say that I play that game and try to win. When my Mega Sister went down, we were 18 minutes on the timer. I would not win the matchup versus Mach. I would only prolonging a matchup that he would win to PP eventually. Um, so I would have played the game differently, maybe, but possibly not. Um, but that's the same thing with Kieran Black. I shouldn't have sacked that versus Sister either. But that was really a mispredictions on my side as I was thinking for a few seconds I was Barberberry. Second I pressed Hidden Power Fire, I was thinking, dear fucking god, I'm, I'm a salt vest, you idiot. And then Kieran Black went down. So, <laughs> but yeah, like those are, like I said, mistakes on my side. And I don't know if that would have settled the game or not. That's the worst part. However, I do know one thing. We are now 0-5, um, which in theory actually means that we can't make playoff. I think the closest team that are in 8 are two wins. And uh, yeah, I need two wins at least. I need five wins and anything. But it's not looking too good. And I've said this in my team or in my draft video, and I kind of want to cover that also here. This is not a team I'm accustomed to use. I think there are f too few options for the teams to work efficiently. I feel this team is more one-dimensional than I've ever used. And while Jardos, Barbarical, and uh, Sarah Aura do provide some... some um, wiggle room for the team, it just isn't enough for me. I really, really wanted more changes. Um, the defensive Pokemon I have are Pokemon I hate using because they're passive, they're one-dimensional, and while I do the role well, they're easy to prep for. And uh, I struggle with that. I really do. I want options. And I absolutely don't want the Vi like Pokemon ever. Like Gligar for me, mm, it's it's an annoying Pokemon for me to use. Um, and I'm not saying that because I want to change the scene, but rather... I'm feeling I can't build as well as I want to because I don't have the means of the Pokemon that are flexible enough to pull that off. Um, getting drafted a bulky offensive team is very hard to do better to try to wiggle that to offensive aspect. Uh, I think I did some points right, but quite frankly, versus Vepsis, it wasn't enough. Um, <laughs> so with that said, guys, make sure to go check out Vepsis' side. Um, he, like I said, he is one of the better battlers here. And while he had some tougher matches, either by predictions or not, this was probably the first time I think we both felt that we were playing each other in a way that felt there was a good exchange of uh, momentum here. And I like that. I think it was it got a very good showcase from both of us. And in the end of the day, that's what I want to upload, even though it is a 6-0. I'm just going to be, I got 6 0 for the 6 turn battle for a 6 0 That's insane. <laughs> So anyway guys, of course, as always, thank you for watching. Make sure to check out Vips side, and I'll see you next week versus Copenhagen, Sourcebuck, and Frosted. That's going to be great.
another skin and you play a head to head yeah that's a back to back that's that's what you want <laughs> anyway guys for watching take care bye